Something we photographers don't do nearly as much as we should is analyze work of other photographers. Today, I am doing a deep dive back into 2023 and looking at some of the best photos of the year. So all of the photos we are looking at today are from the World Photography Organization. Sony does this photography competition. There's awards throughout the whole year. I encourage you to submit your photos if you're interested in that. Today, we are looking at the Architecture Award winners. Let's take a look. Our first photo here was taken by Robert Bolton in the United Kingdom. Um, and I think the composition of this is really what stands out to me first. I think if I were in this position, I probably would have opted for a landscape photo. And that probably would have been a mistake. Typically with something that's sort of long and narrow like this, I want to use a landscape picture to be able to grab all of it. I'm not sure what was on sort of the edges of this island that we can't see, but a portrait photo was a much better decision for something like this. It really creates all of this empty space in the frame with this water and the clouds here. And it allows for this sense of scale to really come through the image. And you feel that when you see this, there's all of this space that is just negative space and draws your attention into the subject here, which is this island and this house. The two pieces that really stand out to me as like where it catches my eye the most are this house here. And then this kind of like driveway sort of tire tracks here and then this gap in the rocks, those two pieces really draw my eye the most. And that's kind of where my attention goes. And so putting those, they're not both centered in the image, but because the house isn't perfectly in the middle, it allows my eye to kind of wander over here and catch this other focal point that's in the image. It looks like the water is maybe a bit touched up, um, like in Lightroom or something because there's these like patterns up here in the clouds that are just from the clouds in the area but we don't really see much of those in the water and I think the purpose of that is by not having this like perfectly symmetrical mirrored image we just aren't really concerned about the sky or the water at all and I think that was exactly the point our eye again completely goes to the island, the subject here, and this can serve as completely negative space instead of like secondary positive space with this pattern, maybe more color. It's just like dull. It's meant to be in the background and it serves that purpose well. It looks like a high aperture was probably used for this. If you look at the edges, you can see the things are still somewhat in focus, like these rocks and like this rubble here but it's a much more soft focus rather than like the building, the rocks that are in the center here. Same with, oh, whoops, same with on this side, like this kind of cobblestone fence barrier here. It's still somewhat in focus, but it's a much softer focus, which means that the aperture was really high to keep this whole island in focus and not just this house instead of like all of these outside pieces being completely blurry. There's lots of really nice textures in this with the rocks um, and then like this brick or cobblestone house, obviously even with the roof, it's got this like pattern um, all made out of rock, which is a really cool texture. And one thing that this image really does, it forces me to ask questions. Um, I really wanna know if this truly is an island, we're not able to see the edges of it um, and then also there is this driveway piece, like where cars have been driving, which makes me think that there could be a place for them to go. Maybe it's like a stretch of land that attaches back to a city or something behind it. But I think that's a really key piece of photos. And we'll see that in other images we're talking about today, that really good photos force you to ask questions and be curious about not only just the location, but how they took the image. Our second photo here is taken by George Turnbill, also in the United Kingdom. You really get this blue impact right in your face as you see it, you can't ignore it. But there is a little more nuance to it than that. There's like four main colors present here. We have this 
light teal blue with the swimming pool and then the reflections of the sun and the water mirror that blue onto this building here. We have this sort of green kind of aqua color both in this corner and this corner which is just unique to their own little areas. And then we've got this kind of brown, reddish, orangish color up here on the bottom of these walkways. And then the last color is just the background here. This blue is different from the swimming pool blue, but it all sort of adds up into this like punch of color when you see this image. I think that's really important with good architecture photography is to emphasize the pieces of the architecture that are unique to that space. So you wouldn't take a black and white photo, for example, of this spot. I mean, you could, and it, it could be a beautiful image, I'm sure, but using color in these ways really creates this impact and this feel that you get that makes you feel like you're there, you're in the moment, and kind of just feel the, the ambience, the atmosphere of it with those colors. The main composition of it was definitely something that I had to wrap my head around a little bit. I personally prefer a lot of symmetry and balance in an image. So when I saw this, I immediately was like, I wonder why they wouldn't take it head on, you know, with these lines being completely horizontal, not creating this like diagonal jarring feeling, but just like even symmetry balance. But the more I looked at it, the more I realized that even though it's not necessarily perfectly symmetrical, there really is this balance to it. The two aqua colors are opposite of each other. We've got these like corner buildings that occupy opposite corners. And I realized that maybe if it was taken head on, it really wouldn't have that same feel to it. You see this, I'm not sure what it is, just this part of the building here and it's not mirrored on the other side. So if it was taken head on, it very well could have felt imbalanced and not had that weight evenly distributed throughout the image. The subject is super interesting, which that's not necessarily on the photographer, but just the location itself, the building, and that's what architecture photography is all about. But yeah, a really, really beautiful picture. The third image, this is probably the personal favorite for me of this bunch. Um, this is taken by Donnell Gumiran, Gumiran, something like that, in the Philippines. And really an impactful part of this photo is the emphasis on scale. And I think this is a really great example of what great architecture photography looks like, which I touched on earlier, but architecture photography is not just about traveling to cool locations, finding a unique building, and taking photos of it because you're missing out on so much potential of an image by just taking snapshots around the world. When you see great architecture photographers do their best work, it's when they find an interesting building or piece and they figure out how to emphasize the greatest parts of that building. But with having just one lone person here at the bottom left of the image, it, it just completely highlights and emphasizes the scale that is going on here. Using black and white on something like this also adds to that impact. It really allows us as viewers to focus on the curves, the size, the lines, the overall feel of the image. The sky being black in the background is not something you necessarily consciously pick up on, but you feel it and it's a big part of the scale of this. If there was no sky and it was something just a bit closer in, it's still a cool picture with these lines and the curves of it, but you just have no idea really what you're looking at and you don't know how big it is. But by adding this just like black negative space in the background, that's taking up, you know, a decent chunk of the image. It's got some real estate in there and it's because it serves a purpose of having negative to contrast the positive. Um, the photo also takes really good advantage of the lines just running along this whole building here. Some people might, you know, take the image like this and it is a great picture, but when you have it like this, you have all these lines, there's nowhere for the lines. You're not following the lines anywhere. Whereas when you include 
this kind of differing part of the building here with the reflection in the windows, you're following these lines all the way up and over around and you're catching on to this contrast from the main building here. It really just is a complete full image that I, it's one of my favorites. I really like this photo. The fourth image here is taken by Beatrice Wong in Hong Kong. Um, super cool location, probably one of the, the best locations out of the five images I'm talking about here. Um, and again, it forces me to ask questions. Is it a house? Like, are people living here year round? What does it look like inside? And the more I look at it, the more confused I get, honestly. I can't get a good grasp of the size of this. I thought it was a house, and then after seeing these cars, looking at how small they are in comparison to this, maybe it's this huge building with, you know, this grand entrance that you walk in, and it just, you, you don't know if it's this house that they've gotten close to with maybe a wide angle lens and has that feel with the cars are farther away, or if it's this massive building that they're just standing here taking a photo of, like a little snapshot. Um, so something like that is really fun. And specifically with architecture photography, finding those questions in a building is kind of exciting and really interesting. And I would say even though a lot of my questions are centered around the building itself, I wouldn't say that that just means this is a quick snapshot that was taken. I think there was either with some luck or planning, some intentionality around the time of day when this was taken. The sun fits really nicely in this negative space here in the top right, and it's close enough to the building where it still feels connected, but it's not out of the image. It's in the image and it reminds us, it shows us how this plays with all these different aspects of the mirror on the building. Taking the photo from the corner is probably intentional as well. It allows us to see how light and color are reflecting, bouncing differently off of both sides of the building here. And then it also allows us to remove the photographer from the image as well, which is always hard with reflections, but we can really put ourselves in this location and not be consciously thinking about the photographer. We can just remove that and be in the image, be in the space as first person instead of third person. And then due to the reflections, we kind of get this cool idea of double negative space, which I just made that term up, I think. Maybe it's a thing, I'm not sure. But we have this traditional negative space back here in the background, just with the sky. The positive space is obviously the subject here with the building. But then within the building, within the main positive space, we have this negative space reflected again, which is just, it shows us kind of the relationship between this building and the nature around it. And it's a fun little effect you don't see very often of this negative space reiterated again in the positive space. Our fifth photo here, the fifth one I've chosen to analyze here is from Yichian Li in Taiwan, um, a beautiful image. And immediately I'm asking, you know, how was this taken helicopter drone, maybe zoomed in from a mountain or structure that they're standing on. But the main thing that stands out to me with a photo like this is the use of color in Lightroom, wherever this photo was edited. I see a lot of new photographers and even experienced photographers who really want their images to stand out. And so they increase the saturation of the pieces that they really want the audience to see and really want them to notice. And it usually ends up overdone. It ruins the picture. It distracts from really what's going on. And so a photo like this with all of this green, this like tint of blue up here in the sky and even these like aqua reflections down on these windows, there was a lot of opportunity to bump these up. Maybe they were, but it's just, it's really not overdone. When that's done properly, this whole image feels cohesive. It doesn't feel like anything is forced at us, thrown at us to really notice. And sometimes as a photographer, it's sort of similar to being like a good movie director. You don't want to give the audience everything. You don't want to throw it in their face. Sometimes you have to trust the viewer who's looking at your image to find the pieces that you really want them to. 
and to notice them. And by doing that, you're not ruining other parts of the picture. It really just comes together all in one cohesive feel that really is is something beautiful to look at. The arrangement of the fog here really plays nicely, whether that's just luck or waiting, planning, but it creates this like natural frame around the main building here. And then also with this bridge that kind of invites you in um, because there's not any fog blocking the main bridge here. And then also with the aperture used and the fog as well, with the use of highlights in the background, it allows those buildings and the background to just kind of fade away into the clouds, which is really nice. It draws your eye into this main tower here and then just creates that extra depth behind it, which you can see it like fades away. Those were the main photos I wanted to look at today. All of those are architecture based from last year. The Sony World Photography Organization put those winners together. Um, this is a new kind of video, so if you're interested in anything like this, I hope to be going through the list and looking at street photography, portraits, movement, all the kind of categories that they've put these award winning photos in. Um, so if you like this kind, if you think something should be a little bit different, let me know. Um, and yeah, I'll see you for a new video next week, always on Saturdays. Thanks for watching.